So, as we are all aware, today's activity is simple. By the end of today's discussion, dialogue, conversation, we should all leave here with all the information we need about our sexuality education, our sexual health, our reproductive health, Mainly because tomorrow we are going to, a lot of people are going to be having a lot of sex. So whilst you do that, what are the precautions you need to take? What, are, what is the information you need to have so that nine months later you ensure that every pregnancy is wanted? Okay. We want to, first of all, ask the audience first, before we come back to the panel. One or two questions, uh, one or two people to respond. What is your first experience with contraception? Any form of contraception? Did you go to buy it yourself? How did you buy it? When you entered the pharmacy or whatever, how did you do it? Did you go to say, I want this one? <laughs> or a friend of mine went there and was like, Charlie, I want to buy a condom, but I don't know how to do it. This is personal experience. So I went there, I deliberately entered the pharmacy. And I went and asked of a brand that I knew they won't have. They said they didn't have. So I stood there. I didn't come out. I stood there. I was like, Fios, they say they don't have Durex. <laughs> you saved your face. So, you know? So he had to come in and say, hey, you are mad. I said, ah, you want to enjoy. You don't want to suffer. You know, essentially. But what, is your, what was your first experience with that? As a man, did you ever buy a condom? What was your first time experience? As a woman, have you ever taken any form of contraception, including condoms? Have you bought condoms for your partner? What was your first experience? Please, any volunteer? Yeah, be yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so much. Please, round of applause for Bay Yaya. One more. So, Bay, it's interesting to know that Bay is an implementing partner because he had a project. Project. <laughs> Please, one more experience. One more experience. Okay, one more experience then we... Maybe from a lady? Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's That's take fine. Mohammed and yeah. Okay, so the first time I, I I had to buy a condom was actually for for a friend. He called me midnight and told me, "Charlie, please, you have the CDs." Ah, uh, CDs. Yes, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> most of the guys call it CD. You know, it's, you have to. Uh huh. 
we don't want people to know that we are already buying condom. Uh, Unfortunately, that the um, if you go to Tamale Velua, around the Tamale Sports Stadium, yeah. there's a Kenyu pharmacy there, and I stay down one. Okay. So I had to leave my area and go to another area to buy it. Okay. Because I didn't want people to see, oh, I felt like you shake my feelings. <laughs> I'm going to buy a Shake no get feelings. Unfortunately, on my bike, when I entered the pharmacy, I saw three people sitting there, and they, gre they greeted me first. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, she had, oh, are you fine? Said, yes. Oh, they even knew you. That's the point. <laughs> are you fine? I said, yes. But what are you planning to do? I said, I, I, I thought that I was going to buy a glass. So the strategy was that I decided to buy my vitamin C. <laughs> so I bought my vitamin C and asked the guy, how much is, what is this? And he said, well, no, how much is one? <laughs> and he mentioned. I told him I was buying 30 cities. Eh? Yes, all of them pretended as if they didn't know what I was doing. When I bought steady space and I was cooking, and he asked me, ah, what are you doing? I was like, they sent me. <laughs> so it was very, very difficult. And yeah. So that day, if I see that guy, I become uncomfortable. Because I've been exposed to this, I, I've been able to move past it. But it's really, really difficult to buy a condom in your area. It's very difficult. Yeah. That's Thank cool. you so much. Thank you so much. Next time you go to buy, make sure that people won't greet you first. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Just to remind you that um, by the end of this program, we are sharing a Bohuai tickets for the play titled "Unhappy Husbands, Unhappy Wives, Confused Husbands." For tomorrow, 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., we are sharing 10 tickets. Yeah, and then the online audience as well, 10 tickets will be going out to you. So stay connected, keep commenting. And when the Q&A session gets here, simply answer the questions and you would have the ticket. Now, we want to understand the correlation between love and sex. Are they the same? Are they not the same? What are the expectations in love? And should sex be a prerequisite to love or an essential ingredient in the whole conversation of love? i like to start with... Let me start with um, Mubinat. Muhibat. Muhibat, yes. right. I'll start with Muhibat. Okay. <laughs> Getting into a relationship, right. what, 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 what are your expectations? Right. What do you expect from a relationship? Okay, so from a relationship, I would say that um, there should be a mutual feeling. Mm -hmm. um, some sort of symbiotic as well, but it shouldn't be a relationship whereby um, it's the interdependency is not so real. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the other gender wants to objectify me. No, mm -hmm. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. It should be mutual. We should support each other. Mm -hmm. And we should thrive and build each other's capacity so that we could l equally develop our full potentials and meet at the top as well. So I think there's something that I look out for. Should it include sex? Should the expectations include sex? Do you expect sex in love? Okay, that's quite a, a difficult question, but I'll try my best to answer that. Mm. Sex is part of love. If you really love someone, mm. you don't mind giving your body to the person. Mm. But some people also do it for transaction. Okay, okay so making it, making it um, a transactional something. But I believe that in as much as we are, you know, have that kind of mutual feeling, if I love you, I will definitely give you my body. Mm. But if I don't, That's it. I don't have that kind of innate connection with you. And so I wouldn't um, have the audacity to right. lay it down for you to have your way with okay. me. Yes. So okay. I would like to, from one, a technical point, mm. but also a personal point. Okay. What are the expectations in love? Should sex be a prerequisite in love, in the conversation of love? You know, to you, um, Salama, too. Okay. Thank you. So, um, when it comes to love and sex, um, from where I sit as a technical person, mm -hmm. I would say that um, sex is a key component. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we all know, mm -hmm. um, if you love me, you have to show it. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you have to kiss me. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you have to hold me in mm -hmm. certain places. Let me feel warm around you, let me feel welcome around you, and it ends up usually with sex. Mm. This is not my personal opinion. Mm. Um, 
picking as a technical person, mm. usually when people say I'm in love, what comes to mind is are they having sex or not? Mm. So yes, um, whether we like it or not, sex is actually part of relationships, most relationships, yes. Okay, interesting. So can I conveniently conclude that if somebody were to deny me sex with, in, in a relationship, would I, con can I conclude that the person doesn't love me enough? It depends on the kind of relationship. And yeah. then I'm happy she mentioned some mutual understanding. Mm. You would have to agree with your partner or probably your, your, your spouse that um, in this relationship, are we having sex or not? Okay. If we agree that we are having sex and then I'm like, oh, um, Sandra, today I want it. And you're like, no, 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 we can't do. Mm -hmm. Then it means that understanding is not there. Uh -huh. From the beginning, if we also set the line straight and say that we are not having sex till we get married, that one you can't say that I'm denying you sex because we haven't agreed on, on, on having sex in this particular relationship. So it depends on the individual, how the communication starts, what your goals are. Yeah. Um, so you will decide whether you're having sex in a relationship or not. Fantastic. Um, Safwa, it's interesting to take your perspective on this, <laughs> mainly because you... You recently got married, yeah. and it was a ceremony nearly everyone in this room were excited about, and a lot of people came to make merry and share their day with you. How important would you say sex is in the life of a married couple? Hmm. <laughs> this one is tailored solely for me, <laughs> and it's fitting perfectly. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, in as much as you've asked this question very yeah. intelligently well, um, I still want to create some perimeters. Um, there is this quote I chanced on by Charles, he's an author mm. and also from France. He said that I love you begins with I and always ends up by you. Mm. So that should tell you that is, uh, I wouldn't say a feeling because a feeling is like you have reduced what love is because there is this, the decision part, there is the feeling part. But it is something that happens between either two people or more. And then when you're talking, up, talking about love, it is broad in the sense that we have Eros, we have Philia, we have Agape, we have Lucia, Lucid, we have, like, I think about eight or seven. There are other school of thoughts um, about it. Some say four, others seven, others eight. But, I mean, we all know the Eros, we know the Agape, we know the friendship one, we know all of it. So, for me... Talking from the Eros point of view, which is the married aspect, mm. and a bit of agape, also it's like it has bits, bits and pieces of yeah. every love to it. I think sex is a very important, vital part of it. And of course, picking it right from our relationship when we had not gotten married yet, we had our own um, rules we had set. For me, I'm a very principled person when it comes to stuff like that because I intentionally kept myself try to be very chaste in all my dealings because I know where love can lead you and I know where sex can also lead you to. Anytime you make a decision and your emotion seems to jump right ahead of you, the, de the decision can never be trusted. Mm. So you always have to be very circumspect with some of the things you do when you're talking about love and sex to be very um, on, on point. So I would say that sex is very important and right from the beginning, even though I did not want to try it before I get the legal, the license to do so, I still made sure that I know it is working before... <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it's, it's one of the things that I am passionate about, even though you want to be chased, but there are certain things you have to check out for yourself so yeah. that you can have a long-lasting relationship as a married couple, if that answers hmm. it. That does, except that the curiosity in me wants to ask, how hey. then do you change? <laughs> you know, I read a, um, a, a, a post this morning on IG, yeah. and the person was saying that, that the highest form of trust is getting married without premarital sex yeah. because then how do you how do tell you know? that yeah. indeed it works that is an interesting conversation mm -hmm. we like to get into sometime maybe by the end of this okay. we'll get into it but i'd like to ask we heard from the audience what their first experiences of um contraception was and it was interesting Mohammed sharing how he bought condom 30 cds i know the condom <laughs> he bought one was he did either 50 pesos <laughs> <laughs> <bought 30 CDs. laughs> You know, and base uh, project implementation, you know, <laughs> guide and all that. But I'd like to hear from you as well. 
what what was your first contact with contraception? How did you receive the information on I need to get a contraception? And how did you pursue the interest to acquire one? And how did you feel after you successfully acquired it? What sort of feeling engulfed you at that time? Let me start with Salamatu. Okay, so as with my personal experience or what I think about <laughs> young people From trying to get to, condoms. Um, let's take both. Yeah. You know, the personal oh, okay. ones are where the juice is. Exactly. But let's take the technical and then hear the personal okay. as well. Okay, let me start from, from the personal. Yeah. yeah. Um, even my name can, you see where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it is difficult for somebody like Salah to be seen with um, a condom. Talk of going to the pharmacy and say that I want to buy a condom. Um, but growing up, um, let's say, we were open in the house. I grew up in a very open-minded um, environment. So you are allowed to talk about your menses, you are allowed to talk about how you feel, you are allowed to talk about whether you even have a crush on someone mm -hmm. and all other, and other things, growing up as a teenager. Um, yes, somebody would want to know, did you actually go to use, um, go to a pharmacy to buy a condom um, yes, I have done that. Um, maybe Salah, because of my environment and where I grew up, it is easy for me to go in and probably say that, oh, can I get a condom? Can I get a body? Can I have a Durex? Or can I have um, a champion condom or rough rider? Depending mm. on what I want to do with it. <laughs> or the kind of excitement I want. Uh -huh. But then it is difficult. You heard somebody talking about vitamin C. <laughs> so you walk into a pharmacy. Sometimes um, as the environment, he got to see somebody that he knew within the community. And then sometimes to basically has to do with um, the person who is dispensing the condom. Sometimes they kind of eye that, oh, yasumawana, <coughs> or is it for you, or it's you are actually sent by somebody. So our environment, if I say our environment, the Ghanaian society, kind of now we have programs in place that is trying to raise all these things. But then the Ghanaian environment, if you have a young person walking to a pharmacy to say that I want to buy a contraceptive, I want to buy secure pills, I want to buy ebony condoms, then what comes to mind is, is she that promiscuous? Mm -hmm. But then, let's be real, we are talking abstinence. Mm -hmm. It is not all of us that can abstain. Let's do the harm reduction bit of it. Whatever you do. I was sharing with Safwa that I have personally delivered, I have a nursing background. I have personally delivered an 11-year-old at the Colibri Labor Ward before. 11-year-old. So whatever you do, there are adolescents between the ages of 10 to 19 who are having sex. They cannot abstain. So what I always say is that let's do the harm reduction bit of it. Those who haven't started shouldn't start at all. Yeah. Those who have started, let's help them to do it the right way. Yeah. What is the right way is to make sure that they use condom. At that age, we are not only interested in preventing pregnancy, but also sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. There are young people like you, even younger than your age, that have contracted HIV and they are on medications. Mm. Is that what we want? No. Nope. All of us are behaving like there's no 11-year-old, there's no 12-year-old, there's no 15-year-old that is not having sex. Whatever you do, there are that age brackets that are having sex. So from where I sit as a technical person, um, what I'll say is that those who haven't started, let's help them to maintain their status. Those who have started, let's help them to have sex the right way. I know some of you will be thinking in your head, hey, Salah is a bad person. <laughs> but that is the reality. Yeah. That is the reality. Some of you are parts of the fellowship programs. You happen to 
um, get engaged in SRH and FB programs. You can attest to the fact that these things are happening. Right. So yes, um, we, we are preaching abstinence, mm -hmm. but those who cannot abstain, let's support them to have sex the right way. Thank okay. you. So um, having sex the right way, and that means making sure that in your pack, safety pack, there's at least one pack of ebony condom mm. wherever you go. I want to find out, when you introduce yourself, Salah, as I work for ebony condoms, or I work with ebony condoms, what's the first impression of people are, you know, how, what, what phase do you get? Okay, so sometimes I sit on radio and talk and talk and talk. People get close and it will be like, hey, is, is this really Salah? <laughs> so work is work, personal life is personal life. Mm. There is nothing wrong, irrespective of your race, irrespective of your um, religious background. There is nothing wrong with discussing SRH mm -hmm. and FP. Yeah. Usually people look at you with the eye of, especially if you are a woman, and you start demonstrating how to use condom properly, how to wear condom properly, then people will be thinking in their head, hey, sister, you are saying my fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, maybe in personal life, she, mm. I don't even know anything. But then it is our work yeah. to get information out there, make sure that the youth, the young people are empowered to have autonomy okay. over their reproductive health. Right. So body, autonomy, and right to sexual decisions. I'd like to come back to Safwa. And mm -hmm. Safwa, please forgive me. Uh, many of the questions I'm going to be asking is going to be within the you know, jurisdiction of marriage. That's and fine. I think it provides a, a, an important dynamism yeah. to the conversation. Yeah. Are contraceptives important in marriages, mm -hmm. including all the forms, including um, condomization and all that. And how do married people in, you know, practice um, contraception? Or safe sex, right? Or safe sex. Okay. Um, thank you once again for the question. I think I would start again by saying I was also discussing with Salah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were having some kind of discussions around the same thing. And I'm like, okay, so somebody who is like a newbie or um, a novice sort mm. of in the space. Mm. And normally when you are going into this um, new stage of your life, you do a, a counseling by the church and all of that. Ah, so we, I mean, the council, we talk about a lot of things, financial, bit emotional, all of the things that you yeah. expect. Now we go to sex. And then our counselor, so that's go and read on your own. I'm like, what are you seeing? <laughs> this is the part we've all been waiting for because, yeah. of course, there are certain things we may not know. It may be a bit technical. We need some, at least they said, oh, there are books. Mm -hmm. So I had to speak with one of Mame. I love her so much. And she gave me a book and for both of us to read, and it was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Even though we're being struck with me, there are some of the things that we know already, trust me. So um, I think it's... <clears throat> It's very, it's very important that, first of all, you get the right information. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of information out there, but then getting the right one so that you can practice a safe sex yeah. is how the way, um, the way is supposed to go. For me, I was very lucky because, once again, I was open to the space. Mm -hmm. UNFPA, they talk a lot about this. Every pregnancy must be wanted. Every childbirth is safe. Every young person has potential. You can wrap this from morning to evening. So I had uh, quite some formidable people that I could ask yeah. Um, of when it comes to contraception because of course there are some misconceptions about some of them yeah. the IUDs and all of that so I thought it was a bit scary even though we've gone through a lot of education for us to know that oh it is trusted but I was like okay let me begin with some of the ones that are quite friendly like the condoms and I was telling her that I've tried the ebony and it's great ah. <laughs> let's give it up she for is ebony. A <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, 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 basically. Yeah, basically that. And I just love how she puts it that she has tried ebony and it's great. Anybody who have had an experience with, do you know condom puncher? You know puncher? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like you get flatter. Anybody who has experience with condom puncher, wow. you know that quality condoms is very important. important. Because you feel like you are wearing a condom and then you finish and you see that it's only the ring that is around you. <laughs> the thing itself is, 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 is destroyed and stuff. So the thing you thought you were preventing, probably there, there's, there's an accident. So it's important that you use condom brands like Ebony and all. I want to go to uh, Muhiba, right? Yes. Please. Right. What, what was your first experience with 
two questions. What was your first experience with contraception? Okay. And when and how did you learn to wear condom? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, my first experience with contraception was um, apparently two years ago. Mm -hmm. I never went to the pharmacist to get one, but there was a program that um, my hall hosted. And then after the program, you know, our hall teachers knew that some of us were but already in the act, mm. sexually active. Yeah. And so they distributed ebony condoms and secure and other contraceptives mm. as well. So personally, I haven't used a contraceptive, honestly. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Coming from a very conservative home, my mom was very, very um, keen on chastity. Mm. And so always she was like, and so you crow. And I don't say, oh, I mean, I don't know. You know, all these, you know, sometimes I saw them to be very gimmick, but I think it, it, it is great. But mm. down the line, you know, something happened and it's yeah. already happened. And yeah. so I would say that uh, it's still quite dicey, mm. but let me draw a story from a friend of mine. Yeah. So she went to the pharmacy to get a contraceptive. Mm. And then, luckily and unluckily for her, her ex was there as a pharmacist that day. And so the guy was like, so you still fornicate and you go about frolicking around with all these guys that I thought you weren't. So it was true. And now you keep on buying contraceptives as you used to do. And she was like, hey, why would you do something like that? Because now it's over between us and whatever I do with my life, doesn't matter but fast forward though that was what she told me she got, she got so angry and then she came back to the hall and you know going up and down talking blah 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 but i i also told her that she should come down because that is something that happened between them some time ago and so she can never do do away with it but i would also say something about how the ghanaian society makes we the youth so sober in terms of um, standing out for what we want. Um, the youth are having sex. That is an indisputable fact. So dear parents, dear pharmacists, um, and to reiterate Ms. Salamat's um, saying, the dispensers should not you know, create an unhaven environment for us to come for the contraceptives. Please, when you are coming to get them, let us get them safely. It's not your business to question us what you're going to do with them or stigmatize us or tell us that we are not of age or whatever it is. We all have different stories backing up what we want to do. But I would also say um, it, should, it should be something that should be made so, so um, safe, unstigmatized, and I think we would go for it the way we want to. And with that, unwanted pregnancies would be curtailed and also... Um, STIs will go down the drain. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Yeah. Now I would like us to with safe sex, contraception. For anybody who is new to these terms, may not understand, mm -hmm. especially maybe even those who are following us online. And so we need to break them down. What is safe sex? When we keep saying, okay, sex, 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 but it has to be safe. What? And I would like to start with Salama too. Okay. As a technical person, what is safe sex? So safe sex basically has to do with um, having a, having sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. In this case, penovaginal sex. You have to break that one down. Penovaginal <laughs> sex, not the other forms of sex that we know. Okay. So if I, I refer to sex in this uh, conversation, I'm talking about penovaginal sex. A man having a penis, a woman having a vagina, and then you having sex coming together. What we are saying is that if you decide to have sexual intercourse, you should use some form of protection. And then the protection should be consistent. So safe sex, it means having a protected sex using condom, either a male or a female condom. And then making sure that you use it consistently. Consistently meaning that as it's not halfway through the sex, then it will be like, oh, mommy, you know, let me enjoy. <laughs> halfway through, then you take off the condom and continue like that. 
you are not using condoms or having a safe sex. Mm -hmm. You can't begin. We've had instances where young people have started sex. Oh, yes, I'm putting it on. And then halfway through the sexual intercourse, they take it out. It is not safe sex. Or you decide that, oh, this weekend, let's sleep with a condom. The following weekend, no condom. That is inconsistent use of condoms. Condom. So you cannot tell that okay. as safe sex. Right. So consistency is, is very critical when it comes to um, safe sex. Right. Thank you. Safwa, um, in her definition, she spoke about protection. Yeah. So what are some of the things that we are protecting ourselves against when we are engaged in safe sex? Okay. Um, also, like she rightly said, for me, when I came across this, this um, new jargon, I was like, okay, so the basic understanding of it is practicing sex the safe way. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's it. Yeah. If, if maybe that was a bit um, cumbersome. Mm -hmm. So um, whenever you are practicing um, sexual intercourse or whenever mm -hmm. you are having a sexual intercourse, I mean, it's like two people coming together. For me, what really was a put off then was that I don't know this person from wherever he grew up from. <laughs> I don't know the kinds of food he has been eating. I don't know how you know, well-groomed he has gone through and all of that. So I really felt a bit, it was very difficult for me, especially even for kissing and all of that. It was something like a no-no. So whenever anybody came to me, expressed their love and they are like, oh, I love you, I want to, it, it's just a put off. I just didn't like it. And, and probably, maybe I'm not, I may, I may be the only person or maybe there are some people who can also agree with my sentiment. Yeah, I can relate. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well. You can well, relate. So, yes, I can I'm relate. glad. I'm happy, I'm happy Safwa mentioned that she doesn't know the food that you've eaten and all that. Yes. Sometimes we want to look at the physical appearance mm -hmm. and say that, oh, she's a good girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe she doesn't have an anklet. Mm -hmm. Oh, she doesn't have a double piercing. She's a I clean like that. girl. By looking at somebody, it you still will not doesn't. be able to tell. Whether That's she true. has STIs, gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV. Exactly. You will not be able to tell. All of us here are suspects. Thank you very much. So that All was it. All of us. So I'm so happy she mentioned that she doesn't know where you're coming from. Exactly. So sometimes we look at the physical appearance and then we are like, oh, she's a good girl. Let mm -hmm. me just go in and then have sex with her. By looking at somebody, mere appearance, mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. tell whether exactly. the person has an STI. Thank you very much, Salah. So on that same point, I look at you and I'm like, okay, I don't think I'm ready because I can't say because I want to have sex with you, let's go to the hospital, let's go to a diagnostic center, <laughs> let me check everything and make sure that I am doing it the right way or not. So Pamela Chano, I'm just not ready and I'm sorry I cannot do this with you. And I mean, that really helped me through and all. But I think like she rightly said, there are a lot of STIs in the environment and it's like at every point, even taking COVID-19, for instance, how many of us thought that something like that was going to happen? And now it's like coming closer to someone was basically like a crime or you getting closer to your doom. So, I mean, there are some things that at the end of the day you expose yourself to whenever you come into close contact with people that you may not know. And like she said, sometimes they may be wearing anklets. You're like, okay, she has piercing, she has anklets, she has this. So probably she has been doing it a long time. So that means that she's a suspect. Or, okay, she's wearing a whole holy coma magisus. Yeah. So that means she is clean. You may be, in fact, wrong. And that may be your doom, like I said earlier on. So, I mean, there are a lot of things that come with it. HIV, you may not know. So I think the right way is to always protect yourself. If you are going with a condom, you are going with it. You know, when you are talking about the, about the safe sex, people still have the, the pooling method too as part of it. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't advise because, once again, it will not protect you against STIs, HIV. And not even pregnancy. Thank you very much. Because you may not know when the prey comes. Maybe there might may be some spermatozoa or something in there and you wouldn't be able to detect right. i'll leave that for the technical people to <laughs> right. add more right. more so, juice to it i'll come there but on that pebatoes one note <laughs> <laughs> you know um i so there was this experience my mom shared with me as mm -hmm. a midwife um oh, nice. so there was uh, you know midwives they have the mandatory um hiv test that they did okay. so they tested the lady and she was positive so mm. they invited the they invited the husband through her consent so that they could find out test the husband as well. So when the husband came in, he was in dreads. My mom's first impression was like, ah, 
innocent <laughs> girl. <laughs> innocent woman has gone to marry this whatever, whatever, <laughs> and he has infected. But when they did the test, the man was actually negative. 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 You know, so appearance indeed can be, be and is can deceptive. be deceptive. Um, Muhi, but yeah. as a young person yeah. exposed with a lot of sexual content, yeah. both online and offline, what are some of the misconceptions you continue to hear about the use of condoms and contraceptions? Yeah, Penero, that's something that people, <laughs> you know, that raw is sweet than putting on um, the, the CD. And I keep telling them, even right before I got here for the yeah. fellowship session, um, I, was, I was talking to my roommates and they were like, if one, one person was like, and I was like, Really? Are you <laughs> choosing raw over your um, Thank you. your health? Mm. Adverse health, um, uh, how do you call it? Adverse health repercussions that would come after when you are not able to, um, mm -hmm. when you contract um, ST, STIs yeah. and other unwanted yeah. um, diseases. She was like, hey, me, I don't care because I'm still young mm. and I have to enjoy and explore. Okay. That's like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and then I told her, for me, if it is not on, it's then not it's not in. in. That's all. Ah, Sharp. <laughs> If it's not on, it's, it's not, not in. in. Yes. I think that is a mantra. We so, take. I would say that there, there are still misconceptions out there. People mm. still misconstrue the fact that um, Roy is sweet than putting on the CD. But I would urge them all to um, prioritize your health over mere pleasure. If you want to have it raw, then you can wait. Go Get tested first. Make sure your partner is also tested. You both are tested and you know that the, the results proven are um, accurate enough mm. to secure your your safety, you know, simulations and all that. So this is what I would say. Right, happened. right, right. And I, like and I think I, I agree with you 100% that if it is not on, it is not in. And I think that basically falls in line with today's, you know, program that's unwrapped. <laughs> uh -huh. so, so basically, that's that. And I think that is a okay. great mantra that can we I all add, should... Can I add something to Yes, that? yes, before. Yeah, I once again also agree with that. And I think now there are um, new, you know, funky ways of, you know, exploring the condoms and all of that. So even though it may not be raw, but trust me, there are some that are nicer if it's not raw. So I think... I have to recruit you as an ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you have more information yes. on that. Yeah. Uh, condom. Oh, yes. thank you because very much. Because it looks much. like you are describing the <laughs> <laughs> So we would, we would get there okay, where, okay. you know, you would tell us more about Ebony's product. Mm -hmm. This one is interesting in that <laughs> <laughs> You know, yes. But I want to first come back to you, Salah. Mm -hmm. I want to understand... Um, what are the suitable, especially as a um, technical person, the suitable contraceptives or contraception options that are available in the market and how we can access them? Okay, so um, if you want to group the family planning methods or the contraceptives that we have currently in Ghana, you can group them as long-acting reversible contraceptives. We are stressing on the word reversible because um, if you want to return to fertility, fertility is assured. Mm. So it's long-acting reversible contraceptive. So we have an IUD where you go to a hospital and then it is inserted um, down there. And then it lies in your womb for a period of 10 to 12 years. It doesn't mean that you've been arrested for 12 years. You can take it any time you want. Still under the long-acting reversible contraceptive, we also have what we call implants. These are transdermal implants. It is inserted here on your non-dominant hand. So you can see two rods. It's just like the size of a matchstick. Two rods. If you have the two rods, that's the one we call Jadel. It's for five years. Again, it doesn't mean you've been arrested for five years. You can even have it inserted. Once you change your mind, you can have it taken off. Then there's the one that comes as a single rod. It's the implant on NST. It's for three years. So for long-acting reversible contraceptives, we have IUDs and then we have implants. IUDs, if you still want to use IUD, but then you can't use the copper, there's also another option for you, which we call um, the LNG, hormonal IUD. Then we have the short-acting reversible contraceptives, like the daily pill. 
like our secure oral contraceptives, you have the injectables. Injectables, you have the one monthly shot that you take, and then we have the three monthly ones. The three monthly ones, the exciting thing about it is that there's a new one that you can self-inject. We call it the DMPASC. You will be trained by a provider, you do the initial one, and then we give you some to take home. So that is it for the injectable. So you have one monthly and then you have three monthly. With the three monthly, there's an option for you to do some self-injection with a small needle. And then um, we have the condoms, either a male condom and then the female condom. Then we also have the permanent method. If you don't want to give birth at all, you can do the vasectomy. Vasectomy is not castration. So the, the males, you can do vasectomy. It is not, it is just a simple procedure. It can be done for you today. <laughs> the same day you will go home. And then we also have what we call bilateral tubal ligation. You hear women saying that you are done in my old day, you know, the womb has been turned upside down. It is not turning the womb upside down. Your tubes are tied and then they are cut. Um, so you will not be able to um, have a child. So that's, we have permanent method, we have long acting reversible contraceptive, we have short acting, and then we also have some natural methods that we use, like the calendar and the other one, and then the withdrawal, studying your body to know how your body works, like the fertility awareness. Today, what kind of discharge am I having? Is it um, dry? Um, is it like the white of an egg that I can stretch in between my fingers? Uh, am I bleeding? Studying your body and then you also know when to have sex. So those are the natural methods. You know, yeah. you know that. And the, then there's also one that has to do with breastfeeding and, and you preventing pregnancy. So there are a lot of options okay. for you. Okay. Thank you so much, Salah. On that note, men in the house, may we <laughs> never pursue vasectomy. Can I get a man? <laughs> Ah. <laughs> I knew, I knew if no one else would say no, you would. Ah, but Charlie, that's like Tommy, a person for go, tie, tie. Nah, anyways, but I mean, that was just on a lighter note. These are options we can all explain. I was following this TikTok couple, mm -hmm. and the man actually did it. Yes. Yeah, I followed it. It even actually shows that you love your wife. Ah, this guy and loved you. Yeah. want to do some more for her. This what guy. it means is that we've had we've had men walking <laughs> voluntarily to say that oh my wife has delivered she's she's done she's given birth to three kids four kids I don't want her to go through the stress of having a BTL and all that mm. um, I volunteer just to show her that I love her what it means vasectomy is not like you won't have erection the guys are not happy <laughs> the guys are not happy at all <laughs> it is not castration. <laughs> You, you, know, you know, Sarah, what is funny? Jibadi was doing, and uh, Stephen was doing. I know you I don't mind, mind too, but whatever you do, there are yeah. men who have walked into a facility voluntarily yeah. to say that. I want to show my wife some love to say mm. that I care about you. I appreciate you having all these kids. Yeah. The little that I can do is to have a vasectomy to show that I love you. <laughs> Guys, be oh. confident in your love. <laughs> be more confident in your love. <laughs> so it is okay. It is okay to have a vasectomy. It is okay to have a vasectomy as as, as a man. Yeah. There's no castration. Um, you would have your erections and everything you will be able to ejaculate you will see something come out just that if we should take that sample to the lab we realize for semen analysis we realize that it's just a semen but then mm. it doesn't have sperm okay so you seeing a woman and getting excited and the thing coming up you having erection being able to ejaculate and all that will happen nicely just that you cannot impregnate this beautiful woman. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. And you wouldn't have to buy a vitamin C first, you know. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. No, we will pour libation and confirm the oil. <laughs> yes, yes. So th that was that was really interesting. And now I want to find out. Growing up, let me take that from Safwa. Did okay. you know or experience someone? Because as you've already established that you are very chaste, so yeah. it may not apply to you. But do you know someone within your circle who had a pregnancy scare? How did the person feel, and how did you respond to that information? 
Okay. I mean, talking about childhood, it just reminded me of something quite funny. So maybe mm. let me just begin with mm -hmm. that, so then I just proceed on. So, um, well, I think in the Eastern region, yeah. Mm. Once again, I'm coming from a very conservative um, home. family home. My parents are ministers of you know the church yes. and all of that. So you should understand. And we went to one of one of the districts that we were staying there for a while, like four years, five years. We've been moving around the country for a while now. So I saw this balloon with water. Mm -hmm. Well, that time I, I used to call it balloon. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm like, what kind of balloon is this? It's different and it's transparent white. It's not the normal balloon I've been seeing. And you could put a lot of water in it and it was still bouncing. Mm -hmm. So I was asking the person who brought it in. I was like, oh, yeah, it's a new balloon. Do, <laughs> do I want to blow it? And I just wasn't too confident with it. But later on, I realized that it was condom. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so um, you know, before you consider, I'm just imagining had she bought it and go home to say that that they bought it, I would have been <laughs> dead by then. I would have been dead. <laughs> so I just thank God once again that I didn't yeah. even try. I wasn't that confident, but um, it was quite recent when we were doing a documentary mm. on one adolescent um, club mm. at I think Western Region and the facilitator there was sharing some stories and that was how close for me i got to know some stories from some teenagers i mean she was in um you know those typical communities and villages yeah. once again uh, it's very scary to talk about sex it's very scary to talk about anything contraception and all of that yeah. Yeah. as young as you are hey you don't even have to go near that animal sex yeah. so for her of course she got to that stage where she was battling with her feelings and she got herself pregnant and the stigma set in and all of that and she died basically yes because she did not get or she wasn't privy to the right information and i mean every day i stress on the right because there are a lot of information out there but sieving through to get the right information for that particular circumstance is so key and keen that you you can't sell it for any other thing and the person lost their life and now the parents were so um, sad, they were appalled by the situation. They were like, oh, you could have even accepted the child. You shouldn't have gone all the way, run away from home. And then you're like, are you sure you would have accepted? You'd have given her some dirty slaps and all of that. You wouldn't want to open up with your children. I mean, when you are sitting with your father, your mother um, in the house, watching TV, and there is this small... Um, you know, parts that uh, display of sex, you see how they'll be stretching themselves, go and sleep, it's late or something like that, then you realize that this is not something we have to yeah. have I remember the time where my dad um, I think he realized I was growing, I went to tertiary and he wanted us to have a discussion <laughs> quite good and it was like, now you are growing has anybody come to tell you that they like you or anything, I'm like, oh dad anybody like how? <laughs> Okay, if nobody has and then it's good. You have to focus on your studies. <laughs> I'm like that. And I know, I, I know that it's not just him. Actually, African parents are yeah. like that. But, I mean, we are changing. The world is changing. And culture is dynamic, is transmissive. I mean, everything can change. So it begins with us. Now that we have the information, we know what to do. We know the kind of information for people who are active, people who want to be chased. I mean, once again, I always stand by being chased because that is the first. Yeah. And if you can't, you'll be faithful. And if you can't, you have to practice the safe sex by yeah. using the condom and all of that. Yeah. So once again, it begins with us. We have the information. Do we keep it to ourselves or we share for our families and then the people we love so that they do not end up like the girl who died because she engaged herself in sex and did not want the pregnancy? Thank right. You. Fantastic. Um, Muhiba. Yes. I know you probably have um, enough or quite a number of information on uh, reproductive health and contraception and sexuality. Imagine you did not have that information. Yeah. How would you th do you think your life would have been? <laughs> shattered. Hmm? Shattered. Oh, okay. Yeah. One word. One, One word. word. Shattered. So, growing up, Aside living with a conservative family, um, my mom realized that the, the, the community that I was in wasn't favorable. Mm. So she took me to my grandmom's place in Pristia, in the <laughs> western region. There she thought that my grandma would have a keen eye on me mm. and she could nurture me to be the very best. But what she didn't know was that... Yes,
<laughs> Back in Pristia, <laughs> the community too was a very, you know, dynamic one. And then there were a lot of um, teenage pregnancies, mm -hmm. chaos, and chaos, uh, uh, chaos, mm -hmm. and also people were practicing on safe sex. I was exposed to all of that. But because I had my grandmom so mm -hmm. closer to me, so close to me, she was able to handpick me. Mm -hmm. She started um, giving me information in the colloquial way, mm -hmm. but I was able to ad adopt mm -hmm. those, those information she gave me. I adjusted, I related, and that transformed me. So I was, I was so particular about who I played with because I, as far as I could remember, as a nine, people were getting pregnant in my, um, oh, in my right. hood. Yeah. Because they didn't have the access to that because the Christian community was a Galamte community. So okay. apparently, parents leave home by, as far as, as, I think as early as four, three, four, five a.m. Mm. to sites. They go yeah. and do the local yeah. so they could get money and then feed their family. And so they, their girl child were always, you know, uh, roaming about, galavanting, doing nothing with their yeah. lives. And so... In as much as you don't have anything doing, as they say, mm. the devil finds work mm. for the devil. I don't. Yeah. And so I would always say this. My grandmom, she did very well. Yeah. Though she wasn't educated, but she used the ifian answer mm -hmm. to um, nurture me, to tell me that, hey, if you do this, if you do that, if you, if you sleep with a man as at 10, you are likely to get pregnant because I was really grow, um, growing so fast. Right. And so... And so I was scared. She told me, you're going to die. You, you know, it would be like, a, and then if you don't know, and then you get pregnant, and you, you, you try to take any medicine, or the guy gives you um, bottles to chew, it will choke you. It will be like a knife. So she made that thing so, um, how do you, like that of a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. So I had this, yeah, very scary. So I had this kind of um, fearful imagination. And mm -hmm. so anytime I thought of going to do anything nasty, it re refracted, like, okay. pulled me back. Yeah. back. Until I got to the tertiary level, and it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, it, it means that the whole conversation about if they give you bottle to chew those yes. things, I think it was effective. Very, you yes. Agree? Scare you. It was because then it was the pool factor that pulled you yes. away from the exposure that we, you had. And yes. perhaps the conversation today would have been different. Sarah, I'd like you to tell our online audience and of course us here present what is your number one selling product now at ebony condoms hmm. and what are the characteristics of these products and how enjoyable are they the moments okay, we are waiting so for so yeah asked me to <laughs> sell a bit <laughs> let me go ahead yeah. Yeah. so we launched ebony condoms somewhere last year in october um Safwa mentioned that they are condoms just like people i don't want um uh, I enjoy raw sex mm -hmm. more than putting on a condom because some of the condoms doesn't really, you don't feel anything. Yeah. But with ebony condoms, it is slick. It's just like the skin. Mm. You get to feel the rugi within the vagina. Mm. You, you get it. You get to feel the folds. What I mean is you get to feel the folds within. It's just like the same feeling of you having a raw sex. And then it's also flavored. Okay. Yeah. And then let me say that we just didn't bring a condom onto the market just to add to the pool of condoms that you have. This is evidence-based. So there's a research, there's a study toward this. What do consumers want? Mm. What are the variants that they want? So ebony condoms on the market, we have vanilla, we have chocolate, we have peppermint. Strawberry. That bears a little, gives a cooling effect. Mm. And then we also have chocolate strawberry but then and strawberry yeah. uh -huh. so that's her favorite she keeps mentioning <laughs> strawberry, <laughs> strawberry. Uh -huh. but then let me talk about our new baby so our new baby now is the ebony plus plus means in addition to all the variants there's something that makes it special what makes it special it is a cold pack we say cold pack inside the pack of the condom you have water-based lubricants water-based lubricants those of us who are sexually active you can attest to the fact that sometimes even if you're having um, sexual intercourse penile vaginal sex you see that 
the condom is lubricated, but then the woman becomes dry. Yeah. Then some of us are tempted to use saliva, to use incuto, to use Vaseline and all those things. Um, they become like portal of infection for the woman. We also are looking at a lubricant. On the market, yes, you have lubricants, but then it's not co-packed. But we are looking at safety with Ebony Condoms Plus. We are looking at safety. We are also looking at pleasurable sex. We are saying that have sex the pleasurable way at the same time to protect yourself from infections. So basically that is our new baby. New baby. And it's co-packed. Once you pick a condom, one condom, you have one sachet of um, water-based lubricants. Okay. And then this lubricant is, is peppermint and strawberry, depending on what you, you want. You if you are the kind that wants the cooling effect, the cooling effect is like you have a chewing gum or you have a mint in your mouth and you decided to add ice to it. <laughs> the feeling that you get. So whilst you are thrusting back and forth, back and forth, you also get that nice sensation. Hmm. So it's just like having raw sex. Right. So those of you who are not like, oh, I don't want to have um, eat stuffy in a rubber and all that, I would like to recommend Ebony Condoms. Co-pack for you. Whether you are the strawberry type or you are the peppermint type. Is, is on the market. Right, right. Okay, so one condom, one lubricant. One lubricant. And on that note, um, you, don't just, you don't just lubricate. You have the peppermint. <laughs> the cooling, the peppermint. cooling effect. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Southwest favorites, the strawberry. <laughs> the strawberry. <laughs> ah. Okay, that, I beg you. I am you very the chaste. One. I'm in the spirit of chase. Yes, but thank you so much for that. I'd now like to take some questions from the audience if there are any but before we do that i would like to remind you that ebo white's play tickets are going out for free all you need to do is answer some few answer a question that we have for you which will be led by um salah so answer the question if you get it right we give you the ticket tomorrow free of charge tomorrow you go and you enjoy yourself at the play there's also the online community to feel free to answer we we'll direct questions to you you answer it, we take down your number, and then we direct you to where you can pick up your ticket. So please, if you have a question, feel free to ask who wants to go first. Otherwise, I'll ask Sela to begin asking questions for our Ebo White Play tickets. Any question? Great, okay, Sela. So one tax for you. Just ask a question, whoever gets it right, then we have an Ebo White All right. ticket for them. So um, one has to do with how to wear a condom properly. Mm. All of us have been wearing condoms, but as to whether we wear it rightly is, is, is something else. So we have a penis model here. We okay. have our ebony condoms. Mm. Um, a volunteer. She will come <laughs> and then show us how to wear a condom properly. So that's the first one. Be, yeah, yeah. And then the second one is to also just tell us briefly how to use condoms yeah. with lubricants. Hmm. How do you use it? So is it how two questions? Condoms. It the first one is to demonstrate how to wear a male condom properly. So that's a ticket for you. Okay. And then someone to also tell us um, how to use a condom with a water-based lubricant. lubricant. How do you use it? Right. To spray it and more than okay, we have our first volunteer. Please give it up for Bay <laughs> Yahya. Okay. The power of co uh, ebony condom. So it's not just coming to demonstrate. You have to tell us something. Huh? Yeah. So. Um, okay. Yes. I can All right. So. So we are all the judges. <laughs> okay. Whether he's qualified to win a ticket or not. So before before Bay Yahya starts, ladies and gentlemen, before we have Bay Yahya demonstrate to us what he's supposed to do, the right way to wear a condom, please, um, our very own Safwa, she's been very instrumental. She has contributed immensely to this discussion. Her uh, insights, especially within the circles of marriage, has brought lots of dynamism and uh, expanded the conversation and I'm very sure we all have enjoyed it. Please, let's give her a round of applause.
Thank you so much. Unfortunately, she has other important engagements to run to. And so on behalf of everybody, we say thank you so much thank for coming. So, so and much. we look forward to having you again. All right. Please, uh, a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the implementing partner, Bay Yahya. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Project owner. I'm not the one doing it. We are doing how to demonstrate yeah. how to wear a meal condom. And you'll be explaining on how to do that. Well, this is the special thing. So I'm going to tear one. I'm going to tear one. Good. <laughs> then I'll cut open it. And normally, you are supposed to use scissors or blades. Oh. But once these two are not available, when the available, when the desirable are not available, <laughs> the available to be the desirable. So I'm going to use my hand. Good. Mm -hmm. And then carefully remove it. And once you have removed it, this is the special joystick. <laughs> <laughs> the special joystick for the journey ahead. Then you put it on top of this. Then with your left hand. <laughs> I swear to God. Then carefully roll it. All right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's it. Please give it up for. So, 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 so. Yeah, yeah, are you done? Well, this is done. Uh. You know that you have a smooth running. Okay, thank you so much, Bay Yaya. Please, Bay, take your seat. Then uh, our technical person will give her comments. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, um, let's, I think he's tried. Let's yeah. clap for him once. For him, gathering momentum to come and stand here and even demonstrate, um, it's not easy. Uh, let me just start by saying that um, you are not supposed to use a scissors. I think that's what you mentioned. Yeah, that. or blade. So that is the knot. Those are the thorns. Mm. So you are not supposed to use a scissors. What happens is that most of us do have sex in the dark. We do not even check the expiry dates. We are so excited that we even use our feet to cut. What you have to do is, even if you're having sex in the dark, make sure that you check the, expir uh, the expiration dates. And then you also make sure that you move your hand around the condom, even if the light is off. There are serrations. You see, it was difficult for him to take. Mm. It is so easy for you to tell where the serrations are. The zigzag, mm. those are the serrations. So you make sure you take across. You see, it's so easy mm. for you to take. You take here, yeah, it won't. So make sure that before you even open it, you keep it in your palm to make sure that it is airtight. So expiration dates and then you tear across the situation. When you open it, you will see that it comes like a feeling bottle. Mm. It was mentioned in your left hand and then your right hand. So it is whichever hand you want to use. Just make sure that you have clean hands. Then you hold on to the teeth of the bottle. Why do we hold on to this? To make room for space. To make room for the space, to make sure that it is airtight. Else, if you thrust up and down, and your penis is flashy, it will burst. So you hold on to it here. And then you make sure that you are going to roll it over an erect penis. When the penis is flashy, it's down, you can't wear the nail tool. So you hold it this way with your two hands. Then you roll it over all the way to the base. So this secures. This secures it. Up there, you are holding on to the feet. 
and then you roll it all the way to the tip. You have some men wearing it this way. I don't know whether it's life or whatever. So you you roll it all the way to the base of your penis to make sure that you are well protected. Then you begin your thrusting up and down, up and down. The moment you ejaculate, do not wait for um, the penis to become flaccid again. It becomes flat before you come out. Well, like what I've ejaculated, then you still be lying on the woman. By the there will still itch. Because the moment you ejaculate, the sperm comes out, or the cement comes out, the length of the penis reduces. So if it reduces and it's up to here, it means all this facility. If you are still lying on the woman, um, she is likely to become pregnant, or right. so you can expose her to any STIs. Right. So when you ejaculate, we know that you are excited. We know that you are hot by try and come out. <laughs> While the penis is still hard. If you are inside and then this shortens, what will happen is that it will be like this and then there will be spillage. Then it will be like, why, why, condom? why are you saying you are pregnant and all that? You see, so that the problem is that that coming out though. Oh, so I think my friend here spoke about the tip. He, he spoke about the tip, rolling it, he said the right hand or bite with both hands. Mm. Secure the side and then when you are removing, because this is a model. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so, for 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 his boldness and stuff, I think he he, he has earned the ticket. So, so we have few minutes more, and then we need to um, we have some more questions to ask so that people can win their tickets. Okay. But maybe let's use questions that we can quickly get answer. answers to. So just quick answer. How do you use um, condoms with lubricants? Condoms with lubricants. So we have condoms here. This is the glass. This is what it looks like. You have a glass with your peppermint in here. So you have three condoms and then you have three peppermints. So I'm giving it to you to you have samples. So how would you use it? Anyone wants to try? Anybody who tries, you get two tickets for you and your partner to go to a new party. So this one is not one ticket. <laughs> okay, there's a hand there. Okay. How are you? How are you? <laughs> okay. So let's hear you. Use the mic. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should I know on the mother to see this? So with any big cards, I think The, the <laughs> yeah. So let's give it up for she's, she's, she's right. She's right. She's right. Which other way can you use a lubricant with condom? Which other way? Z so that's one. Z Which other way can you use it? She okay, let's say let's let's hand it. wear the condom, you can decide to put um, some of the lubricants on the condom. Then you can have sex. So that's, I'm saying that's one way. Which other way can you use condoms with lubricants? Exactly, you know the thing. So that's it. All right. So you can decide to put quite a number, quite an amount of, of the lubricant on the vulva, and then you do your penetration, or you get it onto the condom, then you do so you get that slippery right. um, effect. So either you pour on or you pour in, either ways you will enter. Thank you. Please, next question. Right, so we are asking the online community. The next question. So, Salah, what's our next question? So this this is so simple. Where can you get ebony condoms to buy? So where can we get ebony condoms to buy? Our online community. Do we? Okay. If the. Huh? Okay, in house. So it should be in house first. So whilst we are waiting for the answer, we have an in-house question. And okay, so the person also wins a ticket. Two people or one person? Two people. Okay. So two tickets. So two tickets. So two tickets. 
So please kindly take down, ask them to text you their number so that um, you can contact them. So kindly leave your number um, in the bo chat box um, or the inbox. We will contact you for your ticket. There is a third question in-house, and I want to ask um, our friends who are not in the UNFPA space this question. What is the full meaning of UNFPA? Ah, Abigail is raising her hand. <laughs> okay, what's the full meaning? Okay. Uh, okay, so UNFPA stands for the United Nations Fund for Population Activities. Okay. Please. A round of applause. Okay, so Muiba has also earned a ticket. So how many tickets left? Hmm? Okay, so... Um, hmm. <laughs> Mohamed would help us with the full meaning of UNFPA. Mohamed, please. Uh, so, she's not totally wrong. Yeah. United Nations Population Fund. Okay. So it used to be United Nations. Alright. Activity. But now, it's all that. Thank you very much. Right. But that was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how many tickets left for the in house? <laughs> yeah. Six. Okay. Six more tickets to go. Another question. Another question. Alfred. Yeah. Okay. Mohammed wants. Okay. So Alfred, we want to find out if you know the mission of UNFPA. <laughs> What's our mission? Pray. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Pray. What is our mission? Ah, you prefer. <laughs> okay, okay. There's, there's a hand here. <laughs> She's a smart woman. Every. See. Every young child has potential. Pray! I hope! I hope! I hope! Okay, so we have another ticket. Right, so, um, Salah. Okay, so, um, what does the Ghana Health Service say when it comes to adolescents accessing reproductive and family planning services? What is Ghana Health Service position? when it comes to that. This one, Adolescents yeah. between the ages of 10 to 19 years. This one is BC question. <laughs> it's so simple. You work within the UN space, so you should know. Yeah, but it's still BC question. <laughs> two tickets. For two tickets. You got two tickets, yeah. Going. Going once. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You can answer again. Okay. Okay, please try. You want to? Okay. What else? Okay. So it should be friendly. They should be able to access it with their health insurance. Okay. Who wants to say it better? I think there was a hand there, right? Did you raise your hand? It just, yeah, just I'm try. Sure. It. And so try. try it. Okay. Exactly. So abstinence is key, but then those who are sexually active between the ages of 10 to 19 are allowed to access reproductive health services, including family planning. Right. You got two tickets. Got two tickets. Oh. How many tickets left? Me too, I must answer one question. How many? She had two tickets, right? So I think we have three more. Three more. 
Okay, our online community. Uh, the online has seven. Elisha, we have a question for our online community. Okay, do you have a question for the online So, community? mention the variants of ebony condoms. Just three variants of ebony condoms. <laughs> this one, just last one question. Three variants. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then there is chocolate flavor. Okay, so you have a take here. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Two more to go. Online. Online. Okay, so that person also that gets. That person also gets. So we are good. Right. Okay. So the tickets are finished. Right? No, the online still has six tickets. Eight. But we can, if we are not getting married, we can do it um, in house. In house. Okay. Uh, question What are the three zeros of UNFPA? Ho it's to everyone, but Holali Han was up first. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mohammed was. I said, for several powers, and harmful practices. You know what? I'm going to give you one ticket. You share it about it. Hey! <laughs> yeah, but I think we can give them okay. two tickets. Okay, so since you've taken it to that level, he mentioned unmet needs. What do we mean by unmet needs for family planning? This one, if you know, it is your space. What is your met need for family planning? Okay, something. Uh -huh. No, someone is answering already. Okay, please. Oh, go ahead. Uh -huh. She's won some tickets already. Okay, so something, you answer. Okay. We'll get. Okay. okay. Or met needs for, need for family, family planning. planning. So sometimes people do not have access, like easy access to the family planning. That's an unmet need because if they don't have that, that means they cannot most in most cases practice safe sex. All right, thank you. Don't concern me. Yes, unmet need. Unmet need for family planning. What means? So what basically means is that a woman or a man or a couple. Want to use family plan mm -hmm. and they lack either the access to it or lack the finances to be able to get that or lack the environment that enables them to be able to use that family plan. You want yourself a ticket. <laughs> so, ah. you can get one. so, my sister, you still want to take it as a bonus? I can see that you keep, although they've given yeah. the explanation, so, you keep raising, raising your hand. Is there something you'd want to add? You are good. Are you a midwife or something? <laughs> <laughs> so what it means is that is the gap between a woman's reproductive intentions mm. and her attitude towards using modern contraceptives. So Salah wants to have enjoyable sex. She doesn't want to become pregnant. At the same time, she doesn't want to use any family planning method because she's afraid of side effects. She's afraid of issues with return to fertility. She is afraid of the waiting time, amongst other things. Somebody also mentioned access and all that. So that is it. I want to have sex. I don't want to become pregnant. At the same time, too, I don't want to use any modern contraceptive due to certain factors. So that is unmet me. But I think um, the gentleman. Yeah, and then you. Something. This woman disqualifying. <laughs> for us. Okay. Right. I think we have one more ticket, right? I have a question for my checkmate. Hey. 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 Please. <laughs> Please, where is my checkmate?
<laughs> okay, please, we have one more question. One more question. Oh, where's my checkmate? Hey, checkmate, checkmate. Checkmate. Oh, come out there. Eh. One question for you. Okay, no problem. Right. Do you have one more? Another question. The question I have is for my checkmates so, now. TFHO, can you just tell us what we do? What does TFHO do aside ebony condoms? You are TFHO. Okay. Or the full for TFHO. What is TFHO? Total, Total family. family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not part of what Yes. What do we do? So you win yourself a <laughs> Okay, I want to try what you do. So, um, it's, it's focuses on SRA child um, education, anything. Yes, so they can't Hey, who is family planning USA? <laughs> Anyway, so you want yourself a ticket to Okay. Um please. It, uh. Okay, so the social marketing is, is very critical to us in defining what we do at TFHO. Social marketing is one key thing. And private sector engagement is also very key to us. That's the, the moment TFHO comes to mind, it's a social marketing, private sector. All right. Okay, please, do we still have tickets? It's done. Okay, all right. On that note, please, is Michael around. Uh, Steve, I beg, kindly prompt Michael for us. Steven, kindly call Michael. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say first a very big thank you to all of you for um, the, your participation, the contributions, the questions, the answers. And in fact, for even present here, um, we can't thank you enough. I also like to thank a special thank you to Muhiba. So this is what happened. Muhiba, before the program started, walked up to me and was like, OK, can I join your panel? <laughs> even when we seem to have already settled that but she was able she, she 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 just she said it to me that can i join your panel and luckily wholeheartedly she is here it simply speaks about being bold mm -hmm. being daring mm -hmm. and opening doors even when doors seems to be closed and for me it really inspired me and i'm here so me that keep it up it is you are very young but to be that bold assertive and know what you want and target it and go for it it's so inspired. I learned a lot from you today. Thank you so much for making time to be here today. Especially that you came from the 8, 8 a.m., right? Yes. And you are still here. Thank you so much. I'm sure Ligon is happy for having you. i also like to say a big thank you to Salamato Abdullahi, the technical advisor on Repro Adolescent and Productive Health and Family Planning of TFHO and Ebony Condoms for all the insights she has provided, the information she has provided for being here and educating us here and also the online public for, you know, on conversations around safe sex. Final thank you to the management of the Yoli Secretariat, Michael Ige, and the manager of the um, program, Michael Ige, the Secretariat, and of course, my 33 dear lofters. Please, a big round of applause to all of you. A special thank you to the media team. Ah, media team, thank you so much for putting this together. And to Ebony Condoms for making this happen, the collaboration. Thank you so much for coming through, even within this short notice. Um, we look forward to more collaborations with you, and we hope that this marriage would be a lifelong marriage. Um, Steve, please.
performance takes effort. Ebony Condoms, make it worth it. Um, UNFP management, I really want to appreciate um, you and your entire team for um, this wonderful initiative. We hope to actually keep the conversation going. And um, tomorrow we will be on the field, uh, different universities, to also ensure we communicate um, the ideas around this. So um, basically, I just also want to use this opportunity to thank um, the organizers, Comps team. Comps team, and everyone working behind the scene, and more importantly, our special guests seated here. Thank you very much, and uh, this is just um, a very good way to touch base. We are looking forward to engaging you more. We would appreciate um, your feedback. Are they joining us on the field tomorrow? Yeah, they are. They, they are joining us, us on the yeah. field tomorrow. So we look forward um, also to um, seeing you more. And um, I just also want to say, Medasi, um, Akpe, and Nago de Gracias. Obrigado.